Good evening, all. This is Gary Farley coming to you from sunny Melbourne. I'd like to pay my respects to the traditional owners. I'd also like to pay my respects to all the old people there this evening. I know you all want to get on with whatever it is you're doing, eating, dancing, whatever. So I will be very brief. On the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the Redfern Medical Service, I think it's important we remember its origins. The, its origins grew out of what became known as the Black Power Movement, but which in reality was a small collective of activists in Redfern in the late 60s, early 70s. In the very earliest days of the medical service, when we first opened a clinic in Regent Street, Redfern, and in doing so created history by creating the first Aboriginal community controlled health service in Australia. Uh, community controlled is an important part of what the origins of the health service was all about. It was a project that had been conceived by the community after being identified as a serious problem within the community and the community itself had set about to devise uh, what they perceived to be an answer to a problem and in this instance it was the appalling health problems um, throughout Redfern at the time. But after the original impetus by Gordon Briscoe and Mum Cheryl Smith the um, Aboriginal Medical Service at first started in Regent Street very quickly. It became obvious that that uh, location wasn't big enough to cater the need. We then moved further down Regent Street to a bigger premises, but very quickly that became inadequate as well. And we were in a desperate search for a new permanent location for the newly created Aboriginal Medical Service when a wonderful priest up the road called Ted Kennedy alerted us to some Catholic premises that were vacant, largely vacant at the time, and uh, thus began negotiations with the Catholic Church uh, for those buildings. And as part of those uh, early negotiations with the Catholic Church, one day Gary Williams and I was sitting innocently somewhere in the vicinity of Mum Shell when suddenly she demanded that we go with her to visit the Papal Annuncio in North Sydney. I didn't know what a Papal Annuncio was, but apparently it was the Pope's personal representative in Australia. And so Mum Shell wanted some backup, and when Mum Shell spoke, uh, as a young bloke, you jumped. And so off we went to this strange um, walled enclosure in North Sydney, greeted by a gaggle of nuns um, and ushered into the, um, into the building where we met with this elderly Italian gentleman, uh, whereby Mum Shell began her spiel about the needs of the Aboriginal community in Redfern. And some way into her spiel, she and I both seemed to realise at the same moment that this little Italian gentleman didn't understand a word of English. And so Mum Shell's response was to leap into the air and start shouting at this man and gesturing towards Gary Williams and myself. And she said, these two young, good young Catholic boys what are they going to think of the church? 
and I looked at Gary and Gary looked at me. Gary was a lapsed Catholic. Uh, I was an atheist, which I still am. And uh, what could you do though, except sit there and accept the gracious smiles of the nearby nuns who looked approvingly at these two good young Catholic boys. But in the long term, Mum Shell's and Ted Kennedy's magic worked uh, and we gained the premises where the Aboriginal Medical Service is today. So all I'm urging people tonight is remember some of the pioneers. And these are but a few, but included would have to be Gordon Briscoe and Mum Shell, obviously. Fred Hollows, Marjorie Baldwin, um, Bobby Sykes, who was a fundraiser for a short period, Father Ted Kennedy, Sister Ignatius, Elsa Dixon, who was a stalwart on the board for virtually her entire late life. Um, of course, Naomi Myers, my old comrade, um, and really the person who kept that ship together for the greater part of its history. Uh, if you're there tonight, Naomi, I hope you are. Um, g'day. <laughs> and uh, Bob Solon K. Belair and the great um, John Ufong. They, like I say, are to name but a few. The others know who they are and I hope that as many as possible tonight are being celebrated. And folks, uh, that's all the word I can tell you, except congratulations AMS on your 50th for lasting this long, uh, for being a pioneer in Aboriginal health for those 50 years, and to all of those who were around in the beginning and who are still here, congratulations. I got a feeling that it's not going to be much longer for us, but that's all right. We leave a good legacy. Thank you, folks.